G'day folks. Now it's a little Monday afternoon update. It's actually been a really nice warm day today. I'm quite happy with that. Uh, not, only, not only that, but the whole day at work's gone really fast. Uh, which is sort of what most of this update's going to be based on is... Uh, well, we, get, we got a new ADM. Electrical Discharge Machine Centre. So... Yeah, I'm just trying to look up information and stuff on it. I'll try and do a video of it in action. And I was lucky enough to find photos of it, at least online. I mean, the um, the previous model, I couldn't even find photos of it. It was that old and that obscure. No one even had information on it. So, I've... Uh, I'll ignore the music video, although actually it's a pretty good music video. Custom one. 30 Year War, 1618 to 1648. Well worth watching, or listening to anyway. So yeah, that's another one from Sabaton. If you're into heavy metal, or sorry, I should, should say power metal-ish, with a war history uh, base, then yeah, well, well, well worth it. I own all of their albums now, <laughs> on CD, of all things. Believe it or not, someone still uses... Uh, physical media because I can play it in the car uh, this is what I well, I was helping set up me and Terry the guy I got the Ford and the RF welder transformers and stuff from uh, we were setting this one up today and getting it working and it's not a bad machine it's just just started it and went it, it wasn't like the old one which had spent ages just paddling up and down or maxing out the amp meter or anything like that even on the most basic random setting this thing went for it like it's good so i'll definitely have to do a video of it in action and explain a bit more on how they work but it's basically erosion through direct current and that's that's the spindle from the old one or sorry the head assembly and the old one was hydraulically driven the new one's ball screw thankfully and a servo motor but essentially all it does is pass direct current between this and the workpiece and as you can see, this one's got a profile on it that's a bit black from being burnt into material, and it creates that negative profile in the uh, workpiece, like a die cavity. This would, this would have been for a die cavity, a moulding die. And, of course, you can see this one's mounted on a ball head, so it's fully adjustable. You just tweak those screws to rotate it around. Uh, unfortunately, I was thinking this chuck might be workable on the one we've got, but it's not. So I managed to find a... Uh, just a junk Jacobs chuck on a moderately hardened arbor. It's just a Chinese one off the generic Chinese mill that we've got. Uh, hadn't been used in years and years, so I got, well, Terry just turned it down and fitted it into the uh, arbor holder. So that's working quite well. We're almost done with the test burn, just ran out of time today. But overall, not a bad machine. It's made in Taiwan. It's fairly well made. A lot better made than the um, Hisu Fong ED252, I think it was. But yeah, interesting controls and things. I want a manual just to work out what all the controls do and how to fine tune it. We've got a rough idea of what it, what to do with it, like your uptime, your downtime, your power control, uh, all that sort of stuff. But yeah, not bad. And the best part was it was only two and a half grand. So that's actually quite cheap. It's actually less than what I spent getting me forward on the road. Yeah, ours is in slightly better condition. The buttons aren't all taped up. <laughs> but yeah, it's exactly the same as that. You've got uptime, downtime, spark gap. Uh, can't remember what that one was. That's power frequency or something. It's all square wave. You can see square wave symbols on the front of the cabinet. I'll post a link in the description if someone wants to even try and decipher it just off the... Uh, images there it'd be great i've got a rough idea of what it does we just want to know how to make it happy how to twiddle its knobs and make it happy <laughs> it's like a woman you got to play with it a little bit and just get it just right so anyway the company still makes it ard precision um oh well, sorry it doesn't make that one but they still make die sinkers that's a modern version i'll post a link to that one as well uh it's just showing parts that are made using die sunk dies like the plastic mouldings for these um, telephone and ethernet connectors, uh, CPU sockets and things, or multi-pin sockets. Uh, it doesn't make the plastic socket, but it makes the tool, the profile in the tool, so that plastic can be injected into it and make that particular product. Like, if you wanted to make a uh, raised letter aluminum die casting of that, you could mill it out of copper on a, C on a CNC machine as a negative, plunge it into a roughly 
machine, like machine the bulk of the material out on the mill and then plunge it into a uh, block of tool steel with the EDM and you'll have all that lettering and everything already done. It'll already have tapered edges for releasing the material, not letting it drag on the mould and get stuck. Oh, they're fantastic machines. Best surface finishing are a 0.16 microns or better. That's pretty good. So anyway, here's a bit of information for you. I'll talk to the boss and see if I can do a video on it. Um, he's also given me the old chuck that I replaced today, which is a 250mm D16 Camlock. Uh, it's actually made by TOS, which is a pretty good company, TOS. But the scroll is worn to the point where there's 0.2mm or 0.25 of slop in it, and you just can't centre it. Like it's always the material bar stock's running out 0.25 millimeters, so that'll be a good autopsy and a good demonstration because a few people have asked me how to put, how to reinstall chuck jaws and things like that. So I'll give you a few tips and things on it before I throw it in the steel bin. Uh, it's pretty much junk. I wouldn't put it back on a machine unless you're really into rough <laughs> hobby stuff. But again, it's too big to be of any use on a hobby lathe. So it's a full, it's a full 250 millimeters and weighs a ton. So. I wouldn't recommend using it on a hobby lathe, but eh, who knows. They do make good work holders, but I've already got two floating around for that. Same with work, I think we've got one or two floating around that we can bolt to the mill table and use to hold round bar. But yeah, you can only go so far. So anyway, we've got the new machine in. The old one's outside, so I've got to get onto that table and spray some oil over it, stop it from rusting. Um, not sure what to do with it. The old XYZ table from the dead EDM. Yeah. I'll at least take the trailer and get it and then I can decide whether I take it off and use it myself or give it to someone else. It would probably be good for a homebrew small table laser cutter or something like that but you've only got so much travel, you've only got like 300mm of travel each way on the DRO scales so it's basically 300 by 300 working area or 300 by 600 or something or 300 by 500 or something like that so it's not the most practical for a, uh, a cutter. Uh, yeah, anyway, a little bit more to work with. I've got a mate's laptop in. Uh, I might do a separate video on that one. Apparently his son kind of messed it up, so I want to have a look at that for him. It just beeps a code and doesn't even light up the, the display. So yeah, kind of sad. He only had it for <laughs> about a week or two before his son wrecked it. Sad part is, he's about my age, but he just doesn't know anything about computers. I don't know what he did to it. I think he said he might have accidentally spilt something on it. So we'll give it a try. But since it's a Lenovo Core 2, I think I already have one of these somewhere. It just needs a hard drive. So worst case scenario is I take the hard drive out and see if the other one will boot up. Or if he's dropped it or wrecked the hard drive, well, we're screwed either way. So I'll give that one a go. Likewise, uh, something interesting came in from the Ukraine. I'm not going to show that just yet. It's nice that uh, you can send something out of the Ukraine. All you need is a bunch of postage stamps and a return and a sender, a, a, a recipient address. Send something out of here or, a, or America, you need piles of custom forms stuck to it. That's kind of cool. Either way, it wasn't. It's not illegal to import what I've got. It's just couldn't pass up the opportunity for two of them for like 20 bucks. We'll find out later. It'll make a nice little th addition to a video. And yes, I was trying to kill that vacuum motor, but it just wouldn't give up. There's about 10 minutes of footage of the thing screaming, and that's about it. So, we'll try again another day. Even with the mot straight to the brushes, it would not give up. It just won't. There's no bolts in the housing to start with, even before I got it. So it's all held together by this one clamp. It just won't give up. I don't know who made it. It came out of a dead um, spa bath heater. Or spa bath bubble heater. It, hot air blower. So, yeah, who knows? I'll find a way to murder it. It's of no practical use, and the bearings have, have had water go through them. The whole thing's been flooded. You know, it came out of a flood damage area, or they overfilled, the overflow failed, and all flooded back through the air bubbler tube and filled the thing up with water. So, anyway, that's about all for now. I think it's getting cold out there. And likewise, I grabbed some big chunks of solid round bar stock, like that high. Uh, I'll use that for Shredder Mark III, I think we should call that one. Um, yeah, something a bit chunkier. Big claws on it. And a big speed reduction motor or something like that. There's enough bars to actually make three of them. So I couldn't pass that one up. Nice big tool steel or free machining steel 
solid bar, hundreds of dollars worth, hundreds and hundreds of dollars worth for virtually nothing. Anyway, I think that's about all for now. There's another gizmo there I want to try out, but unfortunately I need incandescent lights over here because the 50 hertz or 100 hertz flicker from the fluorescent lights interferes with the sensors. Um, yeah, I might as well show you what it is. Some of you already know what it is, but it's a chronograph. It's meant for uh, sports shooters, but I've got another use for it. Let's see how fast a um, popped capacitor is going. We just try different brands of capacitors, different values, different voltages. Just sort of position it about here on a clamp and just see if it does pass over the sensors without missing one of them. We'll see how fast it goes. I'm curious. I mean, worst case scenario is if it doesn't work out, I could turn around and sell it for double what I paid for it in Australia. I, I looked at shooters cronies uh, from Australian gun sellers and they want two to three hundred bucks for them. This was a hundred bucks off eBay, brand new in the box. I don't, know, I don't know where they get off selling them that much. So anyway, we'll play with this one later. That's about all for now. I'll post a video on the laptop if I get stuck. Uh, if not, well, you'll probably just see a partial autopsy of it because I think his daughter's already bought him a replacement one uh, for 500 bucks, and she gave him that one out of work for virtually nothing and just put all new software and everything on it, and it's already rooted. So uh, I'll try and get that old one up and running. They're a good, tough notebook compared with the $500 cheapies that you get from the local uh, electronics store. But I don't know, if it's, if it's had stuff spilt on it and it's powered it up, well, it might be done for. Anywho, thanks for watching and stay tuned for lots.